Watergate, the Northwest Territory, and Davy Allison are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is July 13, 2022. It is the 194th day of the year. We got 171 days left. It is the 28th Wednesday in the 29th week and the 23rd day of summer. You got 71 days left until fall. If today's your birthday, you're still a cancer. Today is National Beans and Frank Day, National Frank and Beans Day, whatever you want to call it. Actually, in different parts of the country, the beans come before the Franks. I always knew it as Frank and Beans. July 13th encourages us to make our favorite recipes during National Hot Dog Month. Yes, National Hot Dog Month is a thing and we're in the middle of it. This simple recipe cooks up a delicious dish in no time and goes well with just about everything summertime, like barbecue, hot dogs, hamburgers, whatever. Now the beans part of it is just baked beans and it became popular during the Civil War in the United States. They would later become one of the first canned convenience foods on the market in the 1890s. As a result, baked beans became a staple of the chuck wagon. You know, ranchers, cowboys, all that stuff. It really didn't become a household item until they added the Franks. All right, let's see what else July 13th has given us. 1787, the Continental Congress enacts the Northwest Ordinance establishing governing rules of the Northwest Territory. It also establishes procedures for the admission of new states and limits the expansion of slavery. Now, keep in mind at the time, the West wasn't California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington. The West was about the Mississippi River, kind of. And the Northwest Territory was parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. Canada Canada has their own Northwest Territory. It's up above Alberta and British Columbia and Saskatchewan next to the Yukon. It's basically it's up near the Arctic Ocean. 1793, journalist and French revolutionary Jean-Paul Marat is assassinated in his bathtub by Charlotte Corday, a member of the opposing political faction. 1863, New York City draft riots. In New York City, opponents of conscription begin three days of rioting, which will be later regarded as the worst in U.S. history. Now, this all started when, during the Civil War, they needed soldiers, so they started a draft. And when it got to New York City, people started paying their way out of it. There was a deal where if you could pay $300, which is about the equivalent of $6,600 in 2021 money, you were spared from the draft. Well, most of the people that were in these units they were putting together were working class Irish who didn't have the money to pay their way out of it. So there was a little resentment. The Irish decided they were going to burn out all the rich people, which they did. And they broke into mansions and burn a bunch of buildings to the ground. They started attacking the black residents of Manhattan, which interesting note to that. That is how Brooklyn kind of got really popular or really populated, I should say, because after this, the African-American community moved to Brooklyn. Now, this was in 1865, and the black population had fallen below what it was in 1820, which was around 11,000. It took the military two days to get there, and when they finally got there, they put everything down, and in total, about 120 individuals were killed. 1973 Watergate scandal. Alexander Butterfield reveals the existence of a secret Oval Office taping system to investigators for the U.S. Senate Watergate Committee. 1985, Vice President George H.W. Bush becomes acting president for a day when President Ronald Reagan undergoes surgery to remove some polyps from his colon. Do you put that down on your resume? My boss had to get his backside checked out and I got to run the business for a day. 1990, the Lenin Peak disaster. A magnitude 6.4 earthquake in Afghanistan triggers an avalanche at Lenin Peak, killing 43 climbers in the deadliest mountaineering disaster in history. 2008, the Battle of Wanat begins when Taliban and Al-Qaeda guerrillas attack U.S. Army and Afghan National Army troops in Afghanistan. The U.S. deaths at the time were the most in a single battle since the beginning of operations in 2001. 48 U.S. military and 24 Afghan military went into this valley where the village of Wanat is, and they had to dig in. They were supposed to get heavy equipment. It never showed up, so they had to dig in with shovels. The village elders told them, the Taliban are going to attack you. You need to do something. And they got Apaches ready, which are helicopters and a few other things. The estimate is they were attacked by about 500 Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces. In the end, nine U.S. soldiers were killed, four Afghans were wounded, and 27 U.S. soldiers were wounded. The U.S. claims that they killed in between 20 and 65 Al-Qaeda and Taliban, 
and they wounded at least 45. 2011, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1999 is adopted, which admits South Sudan to member status of the United Nations. 2013, a typhoon kills at least nine people and affects more than 160 million in East China and Taiwan. Premiered on July 13, 2008, Generation Kill. This was an HBO miniseries that follows the lives and experiences of a group of recon marines and an innocent Rolling Stone reporter named Evan Wright as they travel through the deadly terrain of Iraq in 2003. The seven-part series first premiered on July 13, 2008. I watched this. It was pretty good. Um, you know, it wasn't as good as some of the other offerings HBO had had in the last couple decades, like Band of Brothers and The Pacific. But this was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good military stuff. I'd watch it again. Born on July 13th, 1935, Jack Kemp. He was a New York congressman from 1971 to 1989 who ran for the vice presidency in 1996 on the Republican ticket. He was also a United States Secretary of the House and Urban Development and a football player who co-founded the AFL Players Association. Before fame, he became a record-setting javelin hurler and a member of the Occidental College football team. He was an NFL quarterback playing for both the San Diego Chargers and Buffalo Bills and earning the AFL Most Valuable Player Award in 1965 after leading the Bills to their second consecutive championship. On January 7, 2009, Kemp's office issued a statement announcing that he had cancer. The type of cancer and anticipated treatment were not announced. They never said anything. He died the following May, 2009. He was 73 years old. Died on July 13th, 1993, we lost Davey Allison. He is son of NASCAR legend Bobby Allison and former member of what is known as the Alabama Gang. He died at the height of his career in a tragic helicopter accident. The Alabama Gang was a group of NASCAR racers that go way back that lived in a place called Hueytown, Alabama, which is a suburb of Birmingham. This town loved the Alabama Gang. Now, it was Neil and David Bonnet, uh, Jimmy Means, Donnie Allison, Red Farm, and Bobby Allison. And when I say this town loved these people, a lot of the streets are named after them. These aren't like presidents or anything like that. These are race car drivers and they named streets after them. I love that. So I watched this little documentary about Davey Allison on YouTube and they talked to Clyde Bolton, who was a Birmingham News sports columnist at the time. And he said the outpouring of love and grief for Davey Allison was only second to Bear Bryant, who is the legendary Alabama football coach. His father, Bobby Allison, won his first Daytona 500 the evening before Davey was born. It's estimated 6,000 people lined up around the cathedral where they had his wake or church, whatever it was. So sad. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.